Welcome, everybody. This is Factorial Designs, a mini lecture on factorial designs. Uh, take a look at that picture there. Nice fields carved out in little blocks. Uh, that's where some of the notation and some of the ideas, many of the ideas for factorial design came from, uh, agricultural research, in that uh, they would test one factor being seed type, another factor being fertilizer type, uh, and they would carve up the field into blocks. And I have on top there a uh, graphic from later on the lecture. And uh, this is really about, you know, this is really where this notation came from. So let's talk about the essentials. Uh, factorial design means that you have more than one independent variable. You usually have two independent variables or maybe even, you know, three or four. Uh, really, in social psychology, my field, uh, two or three uh, independent variables, that is a three-way or three-factor uh, you know, factorial design is pretty common. Uh, you know, in other fields, in terms of experimental psych, you may get up to four or five. Beyond five uh, factors, it's really hard to predict, and so no one really does that. But I've seen some with many factors. So let's first talk about uh, the notation six, uh, section. Notation system. Uh, so for example, we talk about a two by three factorial. Uh, what that means is there are two independent variables, one with two levels and one with three levels. And we use the uh, x there. Uh, we don't say times. We say a two by three. Uh, factorial design, uh, and we could use that because we use that x there, kind of like a multiplication symbol, actually because in factorial design, when you're looking at interactions, you do multiply things together, and that's where it came from. Uh, but it works out for you because if you want to figure out how many conditions are in the experiment, just multiply 2 by 3. So in this uh, 2 by 3 factorial, there are six conditions. Uh, the way that you uh, work out this notation system is that the number of numerals equals the number of independent variables, and the value of each numeral is the number of levels in that independent variable. So for a 2 by 3 factorial, there are 2 by 3, 2 and 3, two independent variables. The first one, 2 by 3, 2 has two levels. The second one, 2 by 3, 3 has three levels. So in a 2 by 4 by 4 factorial, you have 1, 2, 3 independent variables. The first one has two levels, the second one, four levels, and the third one, four levels. And that has a total of 32 conditions, which you'll probably only see in memory research or some type of experimental laboratory research. So that's what the notation system means. Sometimes uh, we will also list the names of the factor of the uh, uh, independent variables and levels. Uh, you know, so we'd say a two, and then parentheses, a gender colon male slash female uh, by three uh, condition. You know, empathy. You know, empathy parentheses. Uh, you know. Uh, high slash medium slash low. And so that's how we'd sometimes uh, you know, label it. Uh, also, we need to introduce the factorial matrix. That's a graphical way of presenting uh, you know, factorial designs. So we see here a two by two, uh, two levels of each type of training, and two levels of presentation rate. So presentation rate is either two seconds uh, per word or four seconds per word. Type of training is imagery versus rote. And then what happens is in the cells of the factorial matrix, we just cross you know, uh, what's in the columns and what's in the rows. So in the first cell, uh, the presentation rate is two seconds a word. The type of training is imagery. So therefore, uh, you know, in that cell, the, the subjects get the imagery uh, you know, instructions at two seconds per word. 
Okay, now let's talk about the outcomes. That is, what you get when you do a factorial design. You'll get main effects, and then you'll get interactions. So let's talk about the main effects first. The main effects are overall the effects of one independent variable. So for example, in our uh, example experiment that I introduced in the last slide, the main effect of type of training compares data in the shaded, shade, shaded cells with data in the non-shaded uh, cells. So we're looking at all of the people who got rote training and all of the people who got imagery training. Uh, we're kind of forgetting about the other independent variable when we're talking about main effects, presentation rate. The only thing we're concerned with is uh, imagery versus rote. So it's back to a simple one IV experiment, if you want to think about it that way, which you can. Uh, and then the other main effect would be uh, the presentation rate. We look at everybody who got the four seconds per word and everybody who got the two seconds per word. And we compare them together. We kind of forget about the type of training for a minute. This is like a simple one IV experiment uh, with... Uh, uh, you know, the presentation rate as the independent variable. So let's take a look at some numbers. I'm sorry, a little uh, break there. Let's take a look at some numbers. Uh, so notice in the... Uh, In the uh, table, I filled in the numbers. These are the results of the uh, dependent variables. So on average, subjects in the two second per word imagery condition, on average, they remembered 17 words. What this experiment is about is that uh, you're training people to either uh, use imagery to remember the words. So I show them a picture of a tree and I tell them that you need to, when you see the picture, imagine what you're trying to remember. So they are told to you know, imagine a tree, or they're given rote memory instructions. That is, when I show them the word for tree, they should say tree, 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 tree to themselves silently. And so that's imagery versus rote. Presentation rate, pretty self-explanatory. I'm giving them a word every two seconds or a word every four seconds. And so this is a test on uh, you know, people's memory in terms of the type of training they receive and how fast the words come out of them. So uh, for the subjects in the first uh, condition, two seconds per word uh, you know, in imagery, they on average remember 17 out of the 20 words, or 25 words, I'm sorry. Uh, and so then, uh, you know, uh, in the other condition uh, for uh, imagery, that is four seconds per word, they remember 23 words. Rote condition, uh, two words, uh, you know, two seconds every word, 12 words. And then finally, the four seconds per word wrote 18 words. Okay, so uh, we have those numbers in the cells. Those numbers come from the subjects themselves how many words they're remembering. We just average them up for the number of subjects in each condition. Now we have to start to do the statistical analysis. So the first thing we want to do to find our main effects is to calculate the row and column marginal means. And that's very simple. What we do is we look for uh, the mean of everything in each row and everything in each column. So we look for the mean of everything in the imagery uh, row, which is 17 plus 23 divided by 2 is 20. Then we look for the mean or average of everything in the rote condition. Uh, 12 plus 18 divided by 2 is 15. And then what we do is we look for the uh, you know, column uh, averages. So 17 plus 12 divided by 2 is 14.5. 23 plus 18 divided by 2 is 20.50. And these are the marginal means which we'll use uh, to uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, calculate our main effects. So calculating the main effects, very simple. Uh, is there any difference between the marginal means? 
So if I want to find if, out if there's a main effect for imagery, the imagery independent variable, uh, what I do is basically look at the two marginal means for imagery, which would be 20 and 15. Uh, is there any difference between them? Well, 20 minus 15 is 5. That's a five-word difference. That's the main effect, and 5 is the value of the main effect. And do I want to find a main effect of presentation rate? Well, yes, I do. And so what I do is I compare the uh, marginal means or the uh, column means. So 14.5 is different than 20.5, and that's a minus 6 difference. And is that, so 6 words difference, that is a change, so that's a, a main effect. So in this data here, we have an example of two main effects. There's a main effect for the, uh, you know, there's a main effect for imagery, you know, the type of training, imagery versus rote, and there's a main effect for presentation rate, two versus four seconds per word. So we have two main effects in this example here. So what we can conclude is for our hypothetical data is there's a main effect for type of training. Imagery uh, at 20 words uh, produces better recall than rote. And the main effect is five words. The main effect for presentation rate, two seconds produces worse recall than four seconds per word. And the main effect is minus six. Now, one other thing that we can look for is what we call the simple main effect. And this is important in determining whether or not we have an interaction. And so the simple main effects are calculated by comparing and looking for differences between cell means or condition means. And so now we're back to looking at the cell means of 17, 23, 12, and 18. And so what we want to do then is just like with the main effects, we want to compare and look at there's any differences between the cell means, and those are our simple main effects. And so uh, the simple main effects of training at four seconds per word, uh, what we would do is look at the differences between 23 and 18, and that's minus five. And then what we want to do to look for the simple main effect of training at two seconds per word, 17 versus 12, again minus five, and then we'd want to look at the uh, simple main effect of rate at imagery. And rate at imagery would be 17 versus 23. And then finally, rate uh, at rote. And so uh, you know, at the level of rote in, you know, for the other independent variable, uh, you know, uh, you know, rate changes from 12 to 18. And so that's six. And again, the simple main effects, uh, if there's a difference between, for example, 12 and 18, yes, there is. There's a six-word difference. Then yes, indeed, we do have a simple main effect. So now we've calculated our simple main effects. We've calculated our main effects. Uh, we can move on to looking at interactions. So. Let's uh, talk about this other example for interactions. Uh, we're looking at an experiment that looks at test scores uh, in uh, two types of uh, lecture classes, or two types of classes. And we're looking at majors, uh, science majors and humanity majors. And so uh, one type of classes emphasizes the lectures. The other emphasizes the lab work. And then we're looking at the uh, course grades at the end of the semester. So we're looking at humanities students, science students. We're looking at courses that emphasize the lab. And we're looking at uh, the courses that emphasize lecture. And our dependent variable would be course grade. And so uh, what we do is we look at for the main effects and stop, uh, you know, the uh, lecture for a minute and calculate the marginal means. And when you do, you'll see that there are no main effects. That is, all of the marginal means are 75. So there's no change between lab emphasis and lecture le emphasis. There's no change between science and humanities. 
but we're, those are the main effects. We're interested in the interaction. Uh, the interaction is defined as the size or direction of the simple main effects on the DB of IV1 changes at different levels of IV2. Uh, just memorize this and memorize it well and understand what it refers to. The size or direction of the simple main effects on the dependent variable of IV1 changes at different levels of IV2. So let's go back to our example and look to see if there's an interaction or not. So uh, what we need to do then is calculate the simple main effects. Uh, so for uh, major at lab, it goes from 80 to 70, and so that's minus 10. For major at lecture, it goes from 70 to 80, that's plus 10. For emphasis at science, it goes from 80 to 70, that's minus 10. For emphasis at humanities, it goes from 70 to 80, that's plus 10. Oops, I need to go back, sorry. And so applying our definition of an interaction, the size or direction of a simple main effect, uh, changes at the different levels of IV2. So we can say IV1 is major, and IV2 is uh, you know, uh, emphasis. And so does uh, the simple main effects of major, does it change from lab to lecture courses? And yes, it does change. It changes in direction. One way it's going down, the other way it's going up. So yes, indeed, we do have an interaction here. And in fact, if you think about it, the idea of an interaction makes sense in that science uh, majors are more emphasis you know, in, you know, more in tune with doing laboratory work, and so they would score better in lab emphasis classes. Humanities students are less in tune with lab work and more in tune with you know, lectures and discussing ideas, and so they would do better in lecture classes. And that's really what an a interaction is, and I'll get back to the concept in just a minute. So this is an interaction. What is not an interaction? Well, let's go back to our uh, you know, memory experiment and take a look at that. Uh, so again, just to review, uh, I, we already calculated the simple main effects. So for training at four seconds versus training at two seconds, it's both minus five. For rate at imagery and rate at rote, it's positive six. Is there any change in direction or size? Uh, you know, at different levels of one independent variable at, uh, you know, for the other independent variable? Nope, there isn't. That is, for training at four and two seconds, it's the same, minus five. For rate at imagery versus rote, it's the same, positive six. So there's no interaction here. What that basically means is that all the time, uh, if you are getting words at four seconds per word, you remember more than if two seconds per word. doesn't matter about the other independent variable. Likewise, if you are given imagery instructions, you remember more words than if you're given road instruction, and it doesn't matter how fast the words are coming. That's what an interaction means. The other variable has no effect on the outcome of the experiment. So just to review, uh, whether lab or lecture emphasis is better depends, and that's the key word here, depends on which major is being evaluated. Uh, lab emphasis, science majors do better. Lecture emphasis, humanities uh, majors do better. Whether science or humanities majors do better depends on the type of course you're talking about. Science majors do better with lab emphasis. Humanities majors do better with lecture emphasis. Now, a lot of students conceptually have a hard time understanding the idea of interactions, but uh, you intuitively already know what an interaction is. Uh, you know what a drug interaction is, and that's exactly what we're talking about. And let me demonstrate that for you. So uh, when we talk about a drug interaction, uh, you know, for example, if I take a decongestant, I get a little sleepy. 
If I drink a beer, I get a little sleepy. So let's look at two cases. Uh, you know, case A, I take a decongestant, wash it down with a beer, and I get kind of sleepy. Or case B, I take a decongestant, wash it down with a beer, and I, you know, fall into a coma. So which case is a drug interaction? Uh, you intuitively understand we're talking about case B as a drug interaction. That is, drug interactions are these surprising things, these bad things, and it's when two drugs combine in an unusual, weird way. And that's case B. And that's exactly what we're talking about or what I've been talking about with these interactions. Let me prove it to you. Uh, so let's take a look at no interaction between two drugs and an interaction. Uh, so one way that you test how dangerous a drug is is you give the drug to at different levels uh, to uh, 50 or 100 animals, like bats or rats or rabbits. And then after an hour, you see how many are dead. So we're going to do that with drug Y and drug X. And so here we have a data table, a factorial matrix, just like I've been talking about. Uh, so when you give uh, the 100 rats no drug Y and no drug X, surprisingly, none are dead after an hour. If you give uh, you know, another set of rats uh, drug Y, but no drug X, after an hour, five are dead. Okay. Uh, if you give them uh, no drug Y, but uh, drug X, five are dead after an hour. And then if you give them both drug, another set, both drugs X and Y, after an hour, 10 are dead. That's no interaction. Uh, now, uh, you know, when we're looking at drug and M and N, we do see an interaction. Again, looking at that factorial matrix, uh, the control uh, condition, they get no drug M or N, and after an hour, zero are dead. Uh, the subjects getting drug M, but no drug N, five are dead after an hour. And the subjects getting drug N, but no drug M, uh, five are dead after an hour. But look what happens when we combine drug M and N together, 20 are dead. And that just seems surprising and a little bit dangerous and weird. And that's the drug interaction. So, and, uh, sorry. And so if you actually calculate the simple main effects here, you'll see that the simple main effects for drugs Y and X don't change. That is, the simple main effects for uh, drug uh, Y is five deaths. That is, I'm taking zero minus, uh, zero plus five is five deaths. Then I'm looking at the simple main effects uh, for drug X. And so the lethality of drug X by itself with no drug Y is zero versus five, five deaths. And so then, what I do is I look at and I apply the definition. Also, also uh, going from uh, you know drug X with no drug X to drug X at drug Y, that's five deaths. So five and five doesn't change. Uh, so therefore, we have no interaction. Now with M and N, uh, the same thing is going on. The simple main effects for no drug M at drug N at uh, no drug N excuse me, the simple main effects for no drug M are at no drug N, uh, we see five deaths. But then at drug N, we see 15 deaths. And so the direction and size, in this case the size of the simple main effect is changing from five to 15, that's an interaction. And so what you intuitively understand is an interaction, something weird or surprising happening is what I've been trying to tell you with all these numbers. I do wish that you remember these concepts for the exams, uh, but here's a simple way of answering questions on the exams. Uh, when I ask you for a main effect, just ask yourselves, are the marginal means different? And if the answer is yes, there's a main effect. And here's a simple way of answering the question, is there an interaction? Uh, Graph out uh, the uh, data and ask yourselves, are the lines parallel? 
And if the answer is no, the lines are not parallel, then you have an interaction. Parallel lines means no interactions. Unparallel lines mean an interaction. And that's an easy way to do it for the exam.